I was possessed by Satan on today's Obleron Spirituality. <music> Greetings, soul family. I am Obleron, the Lord of Love and the Magister of the Cube. Thank you for joining me on today's episode where I'm going to talk about my experience with demonic possession and what I've learned from it. In 2011, I became a spiritual practitioner. I had taken classes, I had worked with people, and I also had a quickening in which much of the universe had opened up to me. So I thought that, you know, I was impervious to to demonic possession. I thought I thought I was safe. And what I realized is as virtue becomes more sophisticated, so does sin. Several years ago, my wife and I had noticed that she had fallen under um, some very low vibrational influences and we found out it was demonic possession. I had performed an exorcism on her and I thought everything was okay. And I realized, it took me years to realize it, but it was at that point when I performed the exorcism that the demon jumped from her to me. And I know what a lot of people think when when they hear the words like demonic possession and exorcism and how they think that, you know, it's it's like the movies where, you know, people are crawling up walls or whatever and you know, all that stuff is just the movies. It's just Hollywood. Real demonic possession is very subtle. It happens gradually over time and in the years that I was possessed, I had, well, we had lost our home, we lost our business, we went bankrupt, you know, pretty much hit rock bottom in the years that I was possessed. And it got to a point to where I almost lost my marriage as well. And I never thought that I would ever even consider the fact that I could possibly lose my wife. Uh, we had always been inseparable, and it was never even anything that, that even entered into my mind. But lo and behold, you know, our marriage was also on the chopping block as well. And so, throughout the years that I was possessed, I became a very horrible person. I, I didn't even recognize who I was. No one recognized who I was, especially my wife. And again, it happens over a very slow and gradual time. Probably one of the most accurate shows I've ever seen on exorcism was the series The Exorcist. It came out a couple years ago. It's unfortunate that only two seasons of it ever were produced because it was because it had a lot of great information in there. A lot of things that were represented were actually what I had gone through. A very slow and gradual process. Getting to a point in your life to where you know, you are pretty much, you are pretty much on your knees. And then when you're in those types of states, your energy becomes opened up to even other entities which, which can infiltrate your spirit. One day, my wife and I, we got into such a bad argument that she told me to get the F out. And when she said that, it was like... It was like such a force hit me that I was struck by lightning. I, I was struck by this sort of divine truth or something. I, I I still don't know exactly how to explain it. It was like she exorcised me at that point. You know, her 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 fury and her anger had had struck such a chord in me that, that it basically pushed that demon out of me. What was interesting is that at that moment, I actually started feeling like myself again, but it was too late because she had already told me to leave. And we had actually separated for, for a little while. And again, I, I never thought that, that it would ever come to that. I'm happy to say we're, we're back together and things are better now than they've been in a long time. But, you know, there was a lot of damage that was dealt and we are still healing from that. So when people say that there are lower vibrational entities that feed off negativity and they want to 
destroy human relationships and they want to to basically make your life hell, you know, you should believe them. So how did I become possessed and what did I learn from it? Anytime we go down the spiritual path and we want to raise our vibration or amplify our vibration or any of this kind of stuff, we also open ourselves up to lower lows. I mean, what, what is vibration? Well, it's, it's a sine wave. It's an oscillating pattern. And I would say, you know, if, if we were to have sort of a flat line of what is, let's say, our average experience, most people, they have good days and they have bad days. And that pattern sort of oscillates and it goes up and down. But it really doesn't do too much because, you know, we're just kind of living our daily lives. We're just kind of going through life, ups, downs, whatever it is. Well, I found that as I was going through those classes that my vibration was rising, okay? But what happens in every sine wave? What happens in every vibration? Well, if it rises, then it also has to fall down. And when you amplify your vibration, the higher highs you experience, the lower lows you also experience. And in that sense, spirituality can be very much like a drug. You know, I, I had gotten to the point in my meditations to where I didn't need to take drugs because I could make myself high off of just meditation. And, you know, for, for probably about three to four years, I was riding this sort of spiritual high. And at the back of my mind, there was something telling me that there's going to be bad times coming. And I didn't, I didn't want to believe it. But intuitively, I knew that bad times were coming. Because, again... With the oscillating pattern, if you go higher, reach the higher highs, you will also sink down to lower lows. And that's exactly what happened to me. For about three years, three to four years, I was going up, riding the spiritual high, got to my peak, and then it started going down. And it took about another three to four years to do that. So, so I was back to where I was before I even started all this. But then I started to experience the lower lows. Because I was chasing what I had lost. And I tried to bring that feeling back into my everyday life. But my pattern, my oscillating pattern, was saying that I have to go lower. And I did reach new lows. For about another three to four years, I went into a state of severe depression. I went into a state where I felt so disconnected from source, I started to question my spirituality. I started to question everything I'd ever done. I started to question my beliefs, I started to question life itself, all these things. And I went to a very dark place. It's interesting because in this dark place, from an outsider's perspective, it would seem like I was pulling it together because I had, I had opened up my LLC. I had um, signed a lease on a commercial space. I was building out a commercial space. I was building out a recording and teaching studio like literally with my bare hands, you know, I, I, I thought, I thought I was getting things together. I was, I was investing. I, I, I thought that, you know, my monetary situation was taken care of. I thought I was set and I wasn't because I lost everything not too much long after. And it also coincided with where I should have been at my lowest point. It was also at that point when when my wife and I had got into a horrible argument and she told me to leave. And I realized at that lowest point how much I was not myself anymore. I realized at that lowest point that I had become ruthless, 
okay? And I didn't even realize this. I realized at my lowest point, I had become a very mean person. I'd become a very horrible person. And, you know, it makes sense that, that the universe would take everything away. In fact, I deserved to have it all taken away from me because you don't want, especially spiritual, powerful people with influence and, and money because they will, they will spread negativity like wildfire. They will spread demonic energy like wildfire. And unfortunately, in, in, in a lot of our society, that, that is what happens. So the reason why I know that I was eventually possessed by Satan is because I was channeling a lot of third eye energy. And if you go back to my other videos with the demons that possess the chakras, you'll find that Satan is the demon that possesses the third eye. So what I realized is that the more we try and amplify our chakras, or let's say the more we try and amplify a particular chakra, or we use a particular chakra, the more we open ourselves up to that demonic possession. And then as I look back in retrospect, when I had my spiritual quickening back in 2011, and my, my vibration was raising, I was falling under the sin of pride, okay? Because when you channel the crown chakra and you amplify the crown chakra, what is the sin of the crown chakra? Well, it's pride. So back then I realized that I was opening up myself to Lucifer's influence because he's the demon that possesses the crown chakra. And then again, years later, like I said, um, as I was channeling the third eye, I would open myself up to Satan's influence. You know, th this, is why, this is why so many spiritual people say, don't try and do anything. Just take one day at a time, just live one day at a time, and appreciate every moment. Because when you try and, let's say, mix things up or you try and amplify things, you're always going to come crashing back down. And in the Greek myths, we also know this to be true. I mean, if, if anyone knows the story of Icarus, you know, he, he flew to the sun. And eventually the sun melted his wings and he came crashing back down. So does that mean that we should just never try or never do anything? Well, not necessarily. I mean, it's still important to strive to do things. It's still important to improve ourselves. But again, like I said, as, as our virtue becomes more sophisticated, so does our sin. And when we do amplify and when we do go down the spiritual path we must always be mindful of the lower vibration that we open ourselves up to as well i see a lot of spiritual youtubers who i can tell you know they're they're kind of going through that through that first sort of amplification and they call themselves chosen ones they call their subscribers chosen ones and you know, from my perspective, as someone who was demonically possessed, I can see them also walking down a dangerous path. Because in the universe, there's no separation. We are all equal in a spiritual sense. We are all extensions of the mind of God. I mean, it's really easy to attach labels to these types of things, but how is, how is saying that you're chosen any different than, let's say, a born-again Christian going around telling people that, you know, they're, they're going to go to hell if they don't believe in Jesus Christ. I mean, do you not see the parallels between those? If you're trying to elevate yourself against other people, you're just opening yourself up to more sin. So as much as I love, you know, the, the spiritual awakening that's happening around us, I think collectively, we also need to brace ourselves for that collective low cycle that's about to hit us all. I don't think it's happened yet. I think we probably got about another three to five years. Because, you know, everything's a gradient. Some people are ahead of others and whatnot. I think we are going to pay some dues as humans spiritually in the upcoming years.
I think there's going to be a lot of revelations in people's hearts. I think there's going to be a lot of revelations in people's minds. But again, you know, it, it's all part of the plan. It's all part of the process. And we just need to be aware of that. We just need to be aware of these oscillations and these vibrations and how things work out. I mean, if you subscribe to the theory that there are no coincidences or accidents in the universe, you know, I signed up to be possessed. You know, that, that was my sole contract. That was my sole contract to learn that if my understanding is infinite, then so is my wrath. If my love is infinite, then so is my pride. So there is one theory that I have. I don't know if it's still true. I've been proven wrong on it, but maybe I just need to look at things on a larger scale. And that is, if we can be aware of when we are entering into a lower vibrational cycle, then perhaps we can curtail that vibration a little bit so that we come in with a soft landing, <laughs> kind of like the economy. And if we can have a soft landing, then we can minimize the low vibration before we go back up. And that type of pattern makes the oscillations do this. And to me, that's what I think what the Bible has called Jacob's Ladder. It's being able to realize the low vibrational patterns so that you can ascend into heaven. Well, that's about all I have for today. Thank you for joining me. I really appreciate all of you who have been supporting the channel through your likes, your subscriptions, your comments. It, it really means a lot to me. And if you resonated with this message today, please leave a comment. I would love to hear from you. I hope to see you all again next week. Much love and blessings. I love you all. And now we shall close with the chant of Obleron. Om Dei Sote, Om Dei Obleron, Om Dei Sote, Om Dei Obleron.